For the warping process, you will need your ink loom, Texolve or string heddles, yarn for warping, and scissors. I'm using 5-2 pearl cotton, which is strong and smooth. It is a great yarn for ink weaving. There are several pegs on the loom. A, B, and C are used for the first part of the warp. One, two, three, and four help to determine our warp length. Peg five, which is the final peg, is used to hold the heddles. You will need to consider at least 12 inches of loom waist into your warp length. I always like to include a little extra length to sample, determine my width, and explore. You can either use Texol heddles like I have here, or you can make string heddles using a strong cotton yarn, such as cotton carpet warp. Either kind of heddles can be reused. To make a string heddle, take the yarn and wrap it around pegs B, 1, and 5. Tie with a square knot and cut the ends to about half an inch. You can repeat this process for as many heddles as you need. Start the yarn at the tension peg on the left side of your loom. Place your tension peg in the center of the slot. You will want to be able to tension the warp after you've warped your loom. Likewise, the warp will shorten as you weave, so you will need to be able to have this adjustment at the tension peg. We will then need to attach the yarn to the tension peg in a way that we can later undo. There are a couple of options here. You can tie a slipped square knot by taking the cut end of the yarn and creating about a four inch loop with the end. Then tie a square knot as usual with the loop as one end. When you're ready to untie, just pull the cut end. Another option is one that a student taught me. She had the idea to place the yarn in between the tension peg and the loom side. Leave an eight inch tail and loosen the tension knob slightly. Slip the thread into the space between the loom and the tension peg. Tighten the knob. When you need to remove the yarn, loosen the tension knob slightly. For a heddled thread, place the warp thread over pegs B and C, and then down to peg four, under peg five, and then back to peg A. Center and fold a heddle over the warp thread and place the two loops around peg five. Our next thread will be open, so we will not place a heddle on it. The path we will make with the thread is slightly different. To do this, unwrap the thread from the tension peg and bring it directly to peg C. Do not place it over peg B. Then bring the thread around peg four, under peg five, and back to peg A. This is all we will do for the second thread. You will continue going back and forth between a heddled and unheddled thread.
After I have finished a section, I always like to go back and make sure that I wound my threads correctly. We want to make sure that the threads go open, heddled open, heddled open, and so on. If there is a mistake, I will unwind my warp until I reach the place where the mistake was made and wind it again correctly. When you're ready to change colors, do so at the tension peg. Cut off the previous color so that there is about a three inch long tail. Then tie an overhand knot with a new color. Try to keep all your knots within about an inch of each other. This will give you more warp to weave. Continue winding following the draft and switching colors as needed. Wind and heddle the final thread. Cut the end with an eight inch tail. Take the two ends and begin like you are tying your shoes. Wrap the thread around twice instead of once and tighten. Tie another knot on top to keep this from coming undone. The two ends will create a diagonal across the warp threads, which looks scary, but it will not affect your weaving at all. Once you get a few picks woven, you'll forget it was even there. Your loom is now warped and ready to begin weaving on.